This video is about regenerative braking on e-scooters, specifically how to disassemble or disengage it. Not every e-scooter has regenerative braking, and some e-scooters that have regenerative braking don't actually list it on the manual. They don't say how to adjust it or to take it off. In this particular case, I have two scooters, one of them with regenerative braking and one of them without. The four here, the Fiabola, uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. This scooter has regenerative braking and it's not listed in the manual and there's no way to adjust it. And unfortunately what's happening is when you ride the scooter and it can do 30 miles an hour fairly easily, when you engage the rear brake, the regenerative braking hits so hard it pitches you over the front of the handlebars. It's an incredibly dangerous situation. It's a terrible design and could cause very serious injury. So in short, the brakes are completely unpredictable because when you engage the rear brake, it also engages regenerative braking, which cannot be adjusted. And in this case, it is so aggressive that the rider finds themselves smashing up against the handlebars and potentially wrecking and crashing because the brakes are just too aggressive. They're just way too aggressive. They're grabby. So at first we thought it was a problem with the brakes. We bled the calipers, bred the brakes. I even changed the brake shoes, which are located right down in here. You simply take the caliper off, change the brake shoes. It's all relatively easy. There's other videos for that. Bled out the brakes, replaced the whole caliper, nothing. The brakes were still super grabby. It wasn't until I removed the caliper in its entirety that I found out that even with the brakes completely removed, when you pull the brake handle, the regenerative braking kicked in and damn near pitched me over the handlebars. So, there is a secondary control. So this is basically what goes to the actual brakes. It's hydraulic full of uh, mineral fluid. And underneath it, there's this little electric wire, right? That goes to a magnetic switch. Let's see if we can get a good close-up of that. There's two Phillips head screws holding this magnetic switch onto the brake lever assembly. This magnetic switch disengages the throttle when you pull the lever, and it also engages regenerative braking if your scooter has it. After disassembling the switch, simple Phillips head screwdriver, right? So Phillips head screwdriver, two screws, very simple. Remove this switch, and I will do it in two seconds here. Let's just quick pause. There we are. So see, you can see the two little screws. This is what the magnetic switch looks like. Simple flat piece, just senses the trigger pull of the lever, right? And as soon as I disengaged this, all regenerative braking was disabled in the scooter. And all of a sudden, the brakes became completely predictable and completely safe, no more grabbing. So now you have a choice. You can either keep this disengaged, which will also disengage your throttle safety. So when you pull the brake, the throttle, if you continue to pull the throttle and the brake at the same time, you have two competing systems, right? So the, the throttle tells the scooter to go, the brake tells the scooter to stop, and these two systems will compete without this in place. However, of the two, having unpredictable grabby brakes because of regenerative braking that you can't adjust or can't control versus Hey, when you're riding the scooter, when you apply the brakes, you should probably let off on the throttle, right? Let go of the throttle when you're braking. Seems pretty intuitive. Of those two systems, I think it's more important to have safe, predictable brakes. However, I'm sure that you can buy this cable for whatever scooter you have, and you can go through the trouble of threading it through all of the well, rigmarole that you have to deal with in order to replace this to put it back on there so that way your system will be complete. Nonetheless, this is the control that you need to disassemble in order to make your regenerative braking, how should I say, well, disabled, right? So this is how you disable your regenerative braking right here. And at least now your scooter is safe and you can go home and not have to worry about wrecking every time you pull the brakes, right? Hope this has been helpful. Thank you.